You are listening to the We Hired a Sitter for this podcast. We hired a sitter for this. We have a roster of like seven sitters. I'm spending $3,000 on paints. Do you go to therapy? Never have, no. If there was a small fire. I put it out. Real talk. The stakes are too high with my baby. Comedy, parenting, marriage, life. We do it all. I'm a dad and I'm busy. I have an opinion. I don't know if it'll be right, but uh, I'm Patrick. My name is Gaston. We hired Ladies and gentlemen, what is up? You are listening to episode 151 of We Hired a Sitter for This. My name is Patrick Holbert. That's Peggy Pickles on the floor outside the frame, and this is my man. Yo! Gastor Almonte. Literally just got booked on a show. That's the only reason I was texting. I didn't know we started, but we nice. started. We ended. Yeah, you're, you're a busy man. Trying my best to be. I love you it. Do it, Peggy. Peggy will do the rest of your calendar entry you got down me, there. Me. I trust her. She's good. You She's so I mean? happy to see you. Peggy, go to your place. Go to your place. Up there. <laughs> place. Whatever. She'll she'll go up there once she gets bored with this conversation. Yeah, yeah. She'll check in. She's good. Uh, I got house problems. I got, we'll just start off quick. I got house problems. Maybe you're out there listening. Your house is falling apart. I got two plumbing issues in the house. Do you have a Bushwick plumber? You must have a roster of plumbers. We we have uh, a couple of experts that come in, but they're like East New York. Yeah, yeah. Do you but think yeah. they'd come over the hill over here? I mean, sure. You know what I mean? Because I got a, I, out of nowhere, the bathroom sink is leaky. I don't, you use the bathroom. I don't know if you noticed the hot water's not on right now. So how does that work here? Because you're in a condo. Is it a you problem? Is it a building this, problem? Is a me problem. I, I own the condo, so yeah, we got to deal with it. Anything, because not a co-op. Yeah, right. It, yeah, like we own the house, we got to fix. I got to hire somebody. So I got a I got a leaky bathroom sink, and then the the kitchen sink is leaky too. Damn, bro! I, I opened the cabinet the other morning. There's just water collecting under all of the cleaning supplies under the sink, and I'm like, this is a problem that I have to deal with. And uh, I texted my upstairs neighbor about their plumber. No answer. So I need a plumber. <laughs> Do you guys listening mind listening? Yeah, I thought we did this podcast for anything. This is just Patrick's way of asking I, me. I, I gotta handle business today. <laughs> I have chore. Like, I have Gaston won't respond to me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Unless we're doing a podcast. Yeah, exactly. Now that I got him cornered. Hey, listen, uh yeah. you got any handyman that can help me out with all this? You yes. Know what I mean? And uh yeah, so get your phone out, look up the plumbers, and then we'll resume once I get those numbers. <laughs> Most of my, uh, most of the people that like help me out with stuff like that, I actually don't speak to myself. They're all like friends of my dad. Yeah. So like, um, I'll talk, I'll tell my dad, Hey, this is wrong. And then some like Spanish dude shows up yeah. and fixes it. And like, I speak in like my broken Spanish uh -huh. and they like laugh. They're like, Oh, this is Leo's son. He's silly. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Uh, but they resolve it and I, then it gets handled. I could do that. I'll just open the door and I'll be like, Ayudame, Ayudame. <laughs> Real uh, talk. That's how you do it. Yeah, mucho agua, muchas aguas en la uh, piscina. There you go. In the swimming pool. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's a problem. Uh, we also, we, we got to build a wall in this living room. So if you know somebody who can make a, a legal partition, uh, we'll, we'll hire them too. Okay. okay. Maybe I need Leo's number. We'll cut you out. <laughs> Real talk, I'm just a middleman. Yeah. I, I don't actually do any of the stuff. Yeah, we don't need you in the middle anymore. I'll, I'll work with Leo, get these people in here to do these jobs, and then Leo will take your podcast next Real seat. talk. Yeah, he, he's a dad too. You and, know what I mean? And we'll just do <laughs> we'll just do an HGTV-style podcast where we talk about DIY home improvements. Real talk, he would love that. Yeah. He would have a blast. This is his favorite channel. Actually, that would be... Do they have any series that are set in like more like... Like, I feel like when I turn that show on, it's a lot of white people talking about tiny houses. Mm -hmm. They should. I, I've been saying it for years. They need, like, a real uh, urban lifestyle Do Some Latinos go to, like, yeah. I, and not even, like, uh, um, I would even go to other countries. Like, I want to see what it looks like to, like, fix homes in Colombia. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, there's a whole other area that they don't explore enough that, like, I think would be fascinating. Like, because I always think of, like, uh, even within the country, when you go from, like, New York to Florida to L.A., You'll see that they use different, uh, you know, uh, like different uh, materials. Yeah, yeah. Because of local the, the humidity. Needs. Yeah. yeah. So I just find that interesting. Like, I want to know, like, why they use, yeah. you know, brownstone in New York versus, like, you know, whatever they use in Florida for the roofs. Yeah, I like the idea of going back in time and doing home improvement uh, <laughs> projects with, like, historical figures from, like, I'm thinking of organized crime in Colombia. Who who's the main drug dealer there in the 70s, 60s, 70s? You mean uh, like he's the, had multiple multiple Netflix shows about him. The biggest oh, the, cocaine the, trafficker. Uh, uh, <laughs> Why am I blanking on his name? 
Uh, El, El, not El Chapo. No, no, El no. El Chapo you're, was you're, on his staff. You're talking about uh, the the tequila guy. No, Noriega? No. Nah, nah, nah. No, the cocaine. <laughs> the biggest cocaine trafficker. Our listeners uh, are like, oh my god, these nerds <laughs> don't know. Uh, what what did they call uh, it? Uh, uh, why why can't I think of his name? They, I, I, I Narcos, saw it too. Narcos, Narcos, yeah. Season and, one. And Jefe, El yeah. Don, El Patron. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm thinking of all the liquors they call him. Like every he's yeah, like yeah. named that El Patron. Um, well, we'll think of it before the show. It's not El Chapo. No, El Chapo. No, El Chapo is the current guy. The oh the guy in God. Mexico. That's because we are good boys who Real would talk. never do drugs. But I I love that show. Actually, I watched it a lot. It was uh, great. Anyway, I went on an HGTV show about how to build the perfect tunnel. Like tunnel, like redo your revamp your your basement tunnels for your drug That'd trafficking awesome. projects. I'm with it. Yeah, so hardcore. Yeah, HGTV. like that should be the show. How would you do it? How would you have your gun gun yeah. room made? How would you keep your guns secure? I'm with uh, that. Yeah, and then what materials would you use? Because you're in the jungle of yeah. Colombia. Yeah. You know what? That's a whole miss demo. Let's do that. Yeah. Um. Anyway, yeah, I got house problems and they need fixing, <laughs> and uh, I'm probably shirking my responsibilities to my home by doing this podcast right now, but. We're here for you. That's what we do. Episode 151. Here Today we are. Famous drug dealers ignoring water problems. Yeah. I want to. It's so hard to like not go on the phone to just like Google who we're talking about. <laughs> um, should we get a producer? If we had a producer over there sitting in Franny's yeah. little kid chair right there on a laptop. Maybe Peggy. Peggy. Look yeah. it up. Peggy. Could you Google famous drug dealers? <laughs> Why are you so at attention right now? Go to your place. Go to your place up there. <laughs> Run a tight ship here, right, baby. Come here, come here. I'll That's pick what you we up. Do. I'll pick you up. Um, I'm gonna pick Peggy up. It's not Noriega. It's not El Chapo. Oh man, that's a bad look for the Google viewers. Usually, I can pick her up with one arm. No, nah, it didn't work out. I'm not abusing my dog. She's fine. Go to your place up there. All right. She's having a blast. All right. I'm sorry if you saw that and you saw my dog look uncomfortable. She's really seriously okay down here. She does have joint pain, which I was just telling Gastor about. She gets CBD morning and night. She's typing too many papers. Real so talk, she's man. got carpal tunnel. She's published, though. Real talk. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bow, Bow Wow Weekly. Real talk, man. <laughs> yeah, I know Peggy was uh, got a PhD, man. Yeah, she's, crazy. she's a blogger. <laughs> dog, dog blogger. She's letting the community know where to get the best scraps in the neighborhood. Real talk, man. She's famous out here in these uh, streets. <laughs> well, we had, a, we had a whirlwind evening Saturday night. Yeah, we did. There was a lot going on over there. I uh, I I I don't know where if we start backwards, but I do feel like I I may have scared you with my driving on on the way home. I may Honestly, have endangered yeah. our lives. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been in the car with you enough times that like so. Anytime I'm in the car with somebody I've never been with before, that's like the first fifteen minutes of the drive is like, is this a good decision? Assessing. Yeah, I'm yeah. assessing fully. Yeah. I'm deciding if I'm going to have to make a soft sale of like, hey, I should take over. Yeah. You know, and you've proven to mostly be a safe driver. Yeah. So I didn't do that this time. Yeah. Um. Yeah. No, I, that, that was a mistake. On the way back, you was wild. <laughs> I knew. I knew. <laughs> I knew you were uncomfortable when at one point you just went, yo, are you all right? <laughs> and I was like. Oh man, I don't want that tone from Gastor. <laughs> that tone, just those few words. <laughs> that's parental disappointment. Oh uh, yeah, I'm that, concerned. That me. was you as a father being like, "Get it together." Yo, I'm here for you, dude. But like, also, if we if I need to take the seat, I can take the seat. Yeah, you don't need to do it. You know what I mean? Well, at that point, I think we we're four and a half miles from home. I'll, that's still worth taking over. Uh, yeah, and. You know, this is the part where I have to get defensive and say it was rainy. It nah, was pretty rain rainy. Visibility it. wasn't great. That guy, I don't even know if we're talking about the same moment. Maybe there were other cars making bad decisions. Yeah. But to be clear, Patrick was making bad decisions. There was somewhere on that highway, there were other cars saying, yo, you see that guy? And they were pointing at us. But yes. <laughs> <laughs> yo. No, Grand Central Parkway, a guy, it was a Cadillac basically i switched lanes to go into another lane on my left but a car was coming yeah. so fast and i didn't i didn't see him and uh we we missed it by a hair uh and it's all good we made it home yeah we, we did we got a little jolt of uh adrenaline see uh, that's that that was the first one uh-huh then there were like i would say 
on the low end because I like you at least like six times where I was like, really? you were way too close to the car in front of us. Oh, interesting. Okay. Like way too close. Yeah, yeah. Especially okay. in general, but especially with rain. Yeah. There's yeah, like, yeah, I, yeah. I do the whole, yo, 10 miles, one space thing. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Okay. So we doing 70 and I'm like, yo, there's one car space I, in front of us. I don't think I ever drive 70 though. I think maybe you perceive my speed as 70 because, because of how close we were to the car in and, front of us. And because of how rickety my car is. Yo. You're like, this, yeah, I feel it. This go kart is going 100 miles Real an hour tough. right now. <laughs> but really, it's just petering along at 25. Like, you know how, like, in movies when, like, they show a car accident and, like, they do the 360 and they take the car apart? Yeah, yeah. So you can see all the parts? That would really happen to his car. It would explode yeah. into all those individual pieces. And, and there it, would be so much duct tape. Real talk. <laughs> Me and Patrick just flying through the air. You're like, you yo, is I mean? that paper clips holding wheels on? <laughs> and no, I got a challenge. I definitely think you did 70 because okay. you were keeping up with traffic in the left lane. Yeah. Well, at one point we were evading another person who was fully driving like 65 on the shoulder. Like yeah. they were straddling the rum rumble strip. Smoking a cigarette out the window, I'm like, that person is bombed. Yeah, that was they wild. gotta be bombed. We had to get away from them. You made a good judgment call there. Uh, that explains five minutes of the hours yeah, that yeah. we drove. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'll give you those five minutes, Patrick. Yeah, yeah. All right. But, I uh, I will I will I will change my ways with you. Uh just drive the way you've driven every other time. Yeah. Including the way up, you were safe. Okay. Way back you was a little scary for me. I was like, yeah. okay, this is uh I got people that love me that need me to get home. Yeah. You know? No. Uh, they don't need me to get home right now, just eventually. Right. You know? Yeah, it was uh, it was a long day. I, I, I don't want to make excuses, but any day that starts with three hours at the public pool with your kid <laughs> right. in the blazing hot sun, you're not in any condition to drive 12 hours later. I hate like, you. Like, I sh yeah, maybe I shouldn't have been driving. Real talk. I, I would tell you, A, we could switch. B, I'm not above, hey, yo, I got to pull over, take a nap. Let's get some coffee. Real talk. Yeah. I, I am completely fine with you. I need an hour just to close my eyes for a little bit. I did enjoy trading music on yeah, the way home. Yeah, that was fun. We uh, that that was a revelation for me driving up. I was thinking about this today. So we're driving up to Fairfield, Connecticut. We got a big show at the Fairfield Comedy Circle, co-headlining show, our fourth yeah, time. Yeah, it was a good time. Yeah, it was a great time, great room. I've done that room before with Jacob Williams. It's in a hotel lobby at a no tell motel style location which I, I actually didn't realize the first time i was there that you don't get to the rooms by going into the lobby you get nah. to the rooms through the parking lot yeah and, and they're all like passwords yeah they don't give you cards yeah so you know some shady stuff goes down there i love it but it was a but yeah we got this gig we're we're pumped to go do this co headline gig we drive up in the afternoon stormy weather and I said to Gaster, I don't know how tickets are because I become avoidant. Once once I'm like, all right, it's past the point of promoting. We've done our part promoting. We we just got to get what we get when we get there. Right. Hope for the best. And on the way up, I'm kind of talking this out to you. And I said, also, we have some competition tonight because uh, Joe Rogan's Netflix special was going to go live. Right. Okay. And also, uh, 311 is playing the nearby arena in Connecticut. And you were like, what's 311? Yeah. I, so, so then I had to describe to you uh, one of my favorite bands growing up, and it's just so interesting to me that you, you, yeah, you never even heard of them. Yo, I, every song you played, <laughs> I swear you made that shit up. I'm still not sure that this isn't you playing a prank on me. Mm -hmm. Like you just fucked around with like the local Wi-Fi. Yeah. So that when I type in 311, it shows up. There's, <laughs> n I have not seen a group of more unremarkable white men. <laughs> in pictures in my life this <laughs> is like regular dudes yeah, all yeah. them guys and i'm sure they're fine people they make they're good bankers or something but like <laughs> <laughs> nothing about that looked like a group that made music and i didn't even hit you with the fun facts about them that band this band that blends uh punk and rock and ska and reggae uh omaha nebraska <laughs> Real talk. Oh, yeah, that's that's where the best music comes from. Real Did talk. you imagine the best reggae for, <laughs> for the whites? Best, the best ska, reggae, hip-hop music blend ever. Peggy, Omaha, what, Nebraska. what do you want? Why don't you come up here? That's where you get it from right there, baby. Yeah, that's where it's made. You know Bob Marley's from Omaha, Nebraska. Real talk? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, so, 
Yeah, so that was fun. And by the way, viewer, listener, whoever, just let us know in the comments if you would like us to do some like reaction videos. I'll play him. I was thinking we should do formative songs. Like, okay, you play me a song that meant a ton to you when you were thirteen or fifteen or whatever. Okay, and I'll do the same. I'll I'll warn you now. It's going to either be three eleven. Beastie Boys, <laughs> Pantera, okay, uh, Metallica. Um, who else was I really into? Sublime. I I'm dying to play Sublime for you. Have you ever heard of Sublime? I know the I know that there's a group with that name. Okay, but like I couldn't tell you a song. I couldn't okay. hum it. Um, yeah, maybe if you play something. But like by the same token, you felt very confident that I would recognize uh, the 311 song. I didn't, yeah, I, I had no bro. Like on God, you you are the artist. Yeah, yeah. I really thought like, all right, their biggest hit. Everybody has heard that like shopping at the mall or like just, you know, skipping channels on the radio. Like, but yeah, you didn't know. This it. is how little I know of that group. What you just said, I'm not sure if you're telling me places I heard the songs or if those were the names of the song. <laughs> like that could equally be either shopping at the mall, that new hit by 311. That sounds <laughs> completely viable to me. <laughs> Hey, I'm so, so sincere. I, I genuinely like, I'm not sure what you mean by oh, either that one is, of those. That is my jam. Shopping at the mall. Uh, skipping channels. <laughs> yo, skipping channels, yo. That sound like real, like titles. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> yo, that uh, new hit, skipping channels by 311. Just by accident. <laughs> um. <laughs> You're just naming the whole album right yeah. now. You're going down the track listing, yo. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was I was re reflecting on that because I was thinking, what what can we talk about today? And then I was realizing, like, um, some of the some of the artists you played for me, like I've been, I can't stop listening to. Uh, God, now I'm now I can't. I'm blanking on their name. Czar, what what's the group with Inspector Deck and uh, uh, Zarface? Zarface, yeah, yeah, I can't stop listening to Zarface now. Really dope and stuff. A, a bunch of artists I was familiar with, like who is it? Esoteric, yeah, Esoteric Seven L with Inspected Deck, yeah, and uh, a bunch of great guests from other yeah. related bands and groups. And uh, I was like, oh, that's funny. Like this band is probably so important to so many people, but I've never heard of them. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, it's like you get you you get so in your own world you don't realize what other people know or don't know this is one of the, like the things i'm concerned about with my kids actually that like they're growing up in the era where on the positive end they will 100 percent be able to find music they connect to mm -hmm. it exists and, it, and it's easy to easier to find mm -hmm. on the negative end they won't have a communal experience right like when yeah. we go to prom and when we go to now when we go to like reunions there are songs that people play that 95% of the room knows and has like a feeling about. Yeah. They, they're not going to have that because none of them connect with the same songs. Yeah. Like you when know? you come to a party of me and my friends and Down by 311 comes on, 95% <laughs> of us will know exactly who that is. And Gaston will sit down. In and the you'll corner. be like, I think I heard this on a car ride to Connecticut <laughs> and I hated every moment of Real it. Real talk. Yo, like. There's a what's the song? Um, there's a song that I I only know about because I, because in my twenties I started going to friends' weddings and mm. I realized it was like uh, um, the Black Eyed Peas. No, no, no uh, uh, Sweet, Sweet Caroline. Caroline. I was gonna say yeah. it's, if it's a white anthem, it's either Sweet Caroline or the Chicken Dance. Sweet Caroline. Yeah. I discovered I first heard that at like. 27 uh -huh. at a wedding yeah and everybody went off and i was like yo what's this <laughs> and they're like you don't know sweet caroline like never in my life has this played in the place i've been at before <laughs> and they just kept coming up that summer i had like four friends get married yeah and it was like yeah this is shit yeah my wife's family like this and like like all, all my friends from the block that was getting married they would make excuses yeah you know my you know how yeah. she is you know but but like straight up i didn't know it was a thing and then like i went home and like i had to google it and it was it, Apparently it's a big song. Yeah, but. for for some people, sweet sweet Caroline or sweet home Alabama comes on. It's like I might be in danger at this party. Real talk. It's and, but I got to give it credit. It's just really like it turns up. It's catchy. People get loud. There's, there's the refrain and you sing along. It's the bop bop bop. Yeah, yeah people love it. Great crowd drunk song. Yeah, great crowd drunk song. Yeah, big fan yeah. now. Uh, I saw Neil Diamond, and that's Neil Diamond. I saw Neil Diamond in concert at Madison Square Garden with Aunt Nat, Uncle Frank, and my mom. Was it just my mom? Okay. And uh, I got so drunk, and I still I have pictures from that night. Uh, but yeah, it was it was it was a great concert. Huh. Probably 
an hour too long for somebody that's not that familiar with his whole catalog. But <laughs> right. my, my mom and my aunt and uncle were in heaven. That's what's uh, up. I'm happy for them. Everybody yeah. deserves that, man. Real talk. Yeah. I think it's beautiful. I went to see, uh, during one of our anniversaries, I took Gabby to see Million Dollar Quartet. It's like It was like an off-Broadway show. Oh, yeah. And like uh, the whole idea is like uh, these four major artists that like started their careers at this little record label. Uh-huh. That record label was closing. So they all went to like kind of like pay respects to the owner at the studio. And it's like Elvis and yeah. like uh, Johnny Cash. And uh, apparently that day they recorded an album yeah. impromptu. And it, it couldn't come out for like 40 years because they're all on different labels oh, now. The legalities and there it. was legality issues. So and like, this is a real story? This is a real story. Wow. So like they made an exaggerated version of that story for the play. Yeah. But like it's essentially a rock concert. With impersonators of these like famous artists, yeah. So like we went there and it was it was it was a good time for me and Gabby, yeah. But the whole audience was like eighty year old women uh-huh. who was like twenty years old again, yeah. And you saw all these old ladies turn up. I was yeah, like, oh, yeah. this is fire. Yeah. It was so beautiful, you know. Yeah. And then like they end the show and they do like a, a encore, and yeah. it's just a, a straight thirty minute concert. Yeah. Yo, I had a blast. Real there, talk. There's some Johnny Cash songs that make old women want to flop their titties out. Real talk, and we we saw that there was a the legit a bra went on stage, and I and like that's amazing. That's wild. Yeah, I assumed that there was like a pre prep bra though. Like at this age, I don't think they take off bras. Yeah, but I think like someone came ready with a bra. Yeah, yeah. Ross and I had a, I guess I don't know if this is the inverse experience. We went to see a Motown show. I think the show was called Motown. And it was a jukebox style musical, and it's all all this amazing music from the fifties and sixties, I guess. Okay. And uh, yeah, it was a lot of old old black ladies there, uh, yeah. really having a great time. That's um, beautiful. Yeah, I, that's we should do. A, so that's what we'll do. We'll do we'll do some music reaction videos, and then we'll go to a musical together. I like it. Uh, maybe deal. we bring the ladies. That would be fun. Yeah, date night, baby. You know what I mean? You gotta keep them happy. Yeah. How did it feel to see Ross when you got here? Yo, real talk. So, like, um, A, Ross is the homie. I think she's good people. I'm happy yeah. for y'all. Uh, every time I see y'all together, I'm reminded you might be the tallest couple I know. Uh, yeah, like, yeah. You know, on uh, per capita. We are g- open to starting a basketball team. Real a, talk. A two-on-two uh, basketball inter- intergender uh, couples league. Like, low-key, um, for, like, college sake, your daughter should get into rowing. And swimming, you yeah. We talked about rowing on our drive from Westerly. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm open to that swimming. She's gotten really into swimming these last co- few weeks. Um, Get and, into and it, basketball. Yeah. yeah, I plan to be an aggressive, overbearing dad who forces her to get good at sports. Tiger dad, that shit. Hell yeah, 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 all day. I want her to get into all the schools. Real talk. Maybe even acting, cause she's a she's a funny little kid. No money in that. Charming. Don't do that. Yeah, yeah. Good Real point. Real talk. We're yeah. artists right now. We're starving. Okay? Yeah, yeah. Let's, nah. But what about if we can get her on commercials right now? Oh, that's different. Like, what if I did dad manager yeah. stuff? Like, I will just sell her labor to whoever uh, <laughs> just so we can get these sinks fixed yeah, and I'm get a you. new car. If I could have sinks that work right and a car that makes you feel safe, uh, I would be a happy man. How many bills does she have to pay before she can start making rules in here? Uh, like real if, talk, if she if could you, build her you, own wall, this wall we got to build for her. If she could do that, get us a new car. Uh, yeah, she could. Yeah, real we'll, talk, y'all. If, if you get a wall built and you buy the car, you are that house. She's part of the homeowner. Yeah, yeah. she's she's an adult in this crib. I'll put her on the mortgage. Real I don't talk. care. <laughs> we'll get. I mean, I will be. I'll help her start an S corp or an LLC, <laughs> and we'll go into business. And she can keep most of the money because. Most of the, we'll just stop paying for things for her. Yeah. So like if she makes it on, uh, you know, Sesame Street, uh, I, yeah, like sorry, we'll get you whatever food you want, but you you have to buy it. <laughs> um, I feel like the YouTube screeners are gonna be like this. There's a child abuser making podcasts. So <laughs> for the record, I'm totally kidding. It kind of creeps me out, people who put their kids in the in the business world, show business world. But we have thought about. It. I mean, honestly, she is like really yeah, a you funny have a cute person. kid. Real talk, good personality. Yeah. You know what I mean? I see I see kids all the time. They're not most of them ain't cute. People over hype. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, personalities are trash. They don't have a lot to say. Yeah, you know what I mean? But nah, she she's got it together. Real yeah, talk, you I, if, win her. if we could just avoid uh like the 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 uh. 
pull toward video games. That's what I'm scared of. I'm scared mm. of her. I'm see, like I was just talking to my brother about a friend of his who has a 15 year old who won't come out of the room like literally ever. Like okay. the parents are like, oh, he's shy, he's quiet, but it's like, no, he's uh, either totally addicted to video games or has a whole other life online that you don't know about. Uh, that 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 just scares me. Cause, I hear you. Because like when I was 15, I, you know, I would there were things about my life that would make me want to do that. And I'm glad I didn't, but like I, the last people I want to hang out with were my parents, but I don't know. I, I get scared of how easy it is for, for them to just like be only online. I feel you. I do think, uh, <clears throat> that's a choice you could set up. Like, uh, my daughter isn't big on video games at all. Yeah. Um, her digital time is almost always centered around, uh, playing music or like using like uh, procreate like she likes drawing a lot oh that's cool um and then my son is probably the more video game centric one uh and he definitely will like, he'll play if we let him yeah but he's also like real good about like all right family time cool yeah yeah and like we'll, he we go for walks together as a fam um he helps out gabby a lot with the plants yeah um and the video game thing we didn't uh we didn't introduce that to him until maybe three years ago yeah. Like there was no systems in the house, but that's good. Yeah, like none of that. We had a we had a Nintendo Wii in the living room mm-hmm. that uh we all played Dance Dance Revolution on. Yeah, yeah. But it was no like video game in his bedroom. There was no like Game Boys or anything yeah. that he yeah. could like disappear with on his own. Um Yeah, and the Wii is like a physical thing. Right. Like you're you up move. in the you're up on your feet and Yeah, that was our logic. Yeah. But like all of the toys that he's got in his whole life. Everything in his room is either a book that he reads or a thing he builds. Right. Like right. Legos, puzzles. Yeah. Um, we just wanted stuff that kind of it's still fun, yeah. but like it has to be a thing that requires some type of thinking. Yeah. Um, he's big on like puzzle building, uh, both flat and like three D stuff. Uh, and uh, in turn, it gets critical thinking happening. Yeah. But I don't know if I'm 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 as strong against video games anymore. I feel like that's an older yeah way of viewing the world like uh, totally i'm yeah i'm not 100 percent against them i'm 100 i'm against like you know t- skipping school like hours and hours like not coming out of your room for meals like right. if we're having a family visit like like you got to learn how to like communicate with people yeah like i, I also don't want to be the person who's like Hey, tell grandma all about how school's going. I don't want to force her to like socialize or whatever, like because I remember that and that was like annoying. Uh, so what do you plan on doing? I think like yeah, if you're interested in this thing, like here's here's a healthy way to do it. You can you get an hour a night or and however you want to spend your time. If all your other stuff is done, mm. um, I I guess just being really aware about time how much time is spent there and in what times is it appropriate to do it like yeah like if if we're if it's a rare time where we're having like a family barbecue or visit it's like you're not you can't be on your phone or on your your uh video game system all day yeah i think that i think the latter part i agree with the first part i'm actually okay with like uh i feel like with what we like i i am fully in on comedy if you're fully in on video games, go all mm. in. That should be all your time if you believe that it's something you love and you're passionate about. Mm. With the caveat that when you need to go to sleep or when you need to be with family, mm. those are those are like uh incredibly important times. You know what I mean? So yeah. uh but like if you did all your work and you want to spend all your waking hours because this thing is a thing you love, that's cool with me. But I'm gonna tell you that you should be pursuing that the same way I'm pursuing comedy. Oh, interesting. Like, go after it with excellence. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I genuinely believe that, like, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I, I don't think the idea of balance works. I think mm. you check in on things that matter, and then one or two things becomes your focus for a season. Yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So, like, you know, my family matters, my uh, career matters, my health matters. And for the next six months, one of those things is going to get 90% of my time. Yeah. And the one that's lacking will get that the next season. Mm. But I don't think you could do all three equally okay. I think it ends up getting all three whack. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, yeah, what you're describing, I'm I'm struggling with in adulthood. But I guess, 
I guess it, for kids who are like have growing brains still, like I think between the age of like 10 and 15, like it could be really dangerous to be like, yeah, if you like this, do it all the time, but be excellent at it. And then next thing you know, like a year or two has gone by and they've, they've been doing that, but they haven't been building like social skills or it, that would be big for me too, is if I yeah. knew there was community in that digital world right. and they were actually connecting with other people uh, about, you, you know, I don't know, like having fully functioning friendships in that world, then maybe, but like, I don't know. I think there's, it's so important to be in the physical world, having problems with your peers and like working those problems out and uh, having to like build actual experiences with other human beings in in the sp in the room or in the school or in the community yeah you know? I, I could see that i agree with it but i, I definitely think there's uh there's a healthy way of doing gaming and doing it extremely yeah and doing any of those type of uh dream jobs pursuits that are traditionally viewed as antisocial. yeah um I'm i'm like really expanding my idea of uh like how different personality types are how their version of healthy and balanced could look right right you know um yeah i mean i definitely i certainly don't want to be like the old man who's like ah oh, video games are trash uh, right back in my day we used to play in the woods like of course i have those feelings but i also you know uh, i don't know everything about what what the gaming world is like at this point yeah like i think that's dope to play outside but i also i would assume that back then there were kids that were like, man, I hate playing outside, and there was yeah. no video game. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like, and that kid needed the opposite. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, so I, 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 I don't know. I'm into, I try to figure out what that kid is, like, in need and try to figure out a way to build that into their life. Yeah. Um, with social stuff, I make them do social things, whether they want to or not. Yeah. And just to, like, give them chances to kind of see where they're struggling with, and then I talk yeah. with them about it. Yeah. And they tell me like how it felt, and then I, and then we could kind of decide: do you think that's good or not? Yeah, you yeah. know, uh, like my daughter uh, for a while didn't like interacting with people she didn't know outside that were like uh, in retail environments. Right, right. So like I just started like, yo, like you gonna pick up this order? Yeah, yeah. And I would watch from outside the store, but like it was a chance for her to like interact yeah. with that. Yes. Um, and you learn that. Yeah, uh, man, it's it's interesting. Uh, so for some of my day job coaching work, it's it's a lot of that stuff, like people with intense social anxiety and like uh, just fear about being in the world and those basics. Um, it's really tough to see when they don't um, get taught early on. So that's yeah. that's great to like, like real, yeah, and also it's it's the it's my favorite part of uh, community. Cause like uh we're we're uh we're uh we were we were getting for a family dinner. I ordered uh pizza, Brooklyn DOP, dope mm -hmm. spot. I'm a fan. Yeah. And I know Brooklyn DOP at a certain hour gets crazy. Mm -hmm. So I ordered the pie and I tell I tell me I tell uh, my daughter to come with me and we pull up and I'm like, yo, you going in to get it. And she's like, oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> and like she goes in and she does a good job. I'm watching through the window. She handles the interaction well. But what was really beautiful to me is that, like, there's, like, 30 people in this little dive bar-sized pizzeria shop. Yeah. There's no sitting space for the most part. It's like, yo, we, you get your food and go. Yeah. And everyone's waiting for their order. There's Uber drivers. There's, like, delivery dudes, DoorDash, everything in there. And they see this 14, 15-year-old trying to maneuver that space yeah and it's kind of like a community understanding of like yo we savages but like let yeah. let, let, her, let her try this yeah you know? yeah women and, and children we take care of yeah, yeah. And everyone kind of just like kind of step back and let her uh speak her turn yeah they told her the order was in the back because it was for a whole pie and not for an individual so she had to go through more people yeah and then on the way back everyone split like some like parting of the red sea while she like maneuvers this big ass pizza box yeah. the size of her. Yeah, yeah. And it was it was sincerely dope to see like the community was yes. like, yo, we're gonna be here and like make this uh, a, a a thing that's easier for her to like get her feet wet. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It, it it sincerely like warmed my heart. You know what I mean? So like shouts to the customers at Brooklyn DOP uh, yeah. on Tuesday. That's beautiful. Uh where is that located? In your um, neighborhood? It's uh NASA near uh Union Hall. I want to oh, say yeah, it's on yeah. fifth. 
Okay. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I, I like the yeah. pizza there a lot. But uh, that sincerely like moved me. I was like, yo, this is dope. Yeah. This, this overcrowded pizza place like came together and was like. Without even talking, yes. realize we got to let this kid kind of maneuver through the space. Uh, I, that's such a huge thing I love about city living in general is like there is such an awareness of each other that j you just have to have because there's yeah. so much chaos everywhere all the time that people are so – most people are pretty mindful of each other right. and like look out for each other. And Ross yesterday, she, she took Franny to the public pool after camp and uh, she had to like – help another mom get their kid out of the pool there was like some chaos i didn't get the exact details but like basically you're not just a parent to your kid when you're at the playground or out right. in the world you're also parenting all the other little ones around so like yeah what you're describing sounds like a lot of people who are like i don't know who this kid is but i'm gonna help take care of her in this moment amen and it makes me think of the vonnegut thing i was trying to describe this to somebody recently have you ever heard kurt vonnegut talk about getting stamps Nah. And do you mind if I kill our um kill who's, our momentum by Who's Kurt Vonnegut? Kurt Vonnegut wrote Slaughterhouse Five. He's like a he's like a you know, famous class uh I don't know if you'd say classic author because he's a modern modern author, but okay. uh yeah, just That's this, a dope name by the way, Kurt Vonnegut. Yeah. That shit hard. So uh uh so his wife he says my wife asked me, why do you go to the post office to get your stamps? Like, why don't you just like order the stamps and they'll mail you the stamps or whatever? Like, why don't right. you just get them online? Whatever he says. And he says, because he's a writer, he says, I work at home and if I wanted to, I could have a computer right by my bed and I'd never have to leave it. But I use a typewriter and afterwards I mark up the pages with a pencil. Then I... I might be reading the wrong one. Uh... I'm really killing the momentum. I'm here. doing this. I don't even uh, know what it is. I'm writing. I'm typing on uh, all my jokes now on the typewriter. Yeah, yeah. I'm editing them with pen. Uh, then I'm a I'm a I'm a stamp mail them to my friends for notes. It's the uh, actually I might be also I might also be um, misquoting the story. Real talk. I think it's it's about envelopes. This is actually about uh, Kirk Gibson. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, Base baseball player, baseball LA player. Dodgers. And I make her well, Gibson. It's crazy that I know nothing about modern sports or teams, <laughs> but you mentioned somebody whose baseball card I looked at repeatedly in the 80s and 90s. I like still remember it. Um, <laughs> He's talking okay. about how he signs baseballs. His uh, autographing technique keeps his arms from getting sore. You could still pitch in the big game. Kirk Gibson? Yeah. Was he, a, he wasn't a pitcher, though, was he? I don't know. I'm just. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. All right. Kurt Vonnegut tells his wife he's going out to buy an envelope. Oh, she says, well, you're not a poor man. You know, why don't you go online and buy 100 envelopes and put them in the closet? <laughs> uh, <laughs> and he says... That's, yo, that, yo, <laughs> that's so hysterical that, like, she thought this was a money problem. Yo, you think millionaires is saving money on stamps? <laughs> <laughs> yo, I know you think, yo, I know you try to be, like, fiscally responsible. But like the stamp money, you know, we could spare that. Oh, this is so annoying. I'm not even going to be able to read you this whole thing because, of course, you got to have a fucking account. God, uh, let's see if if let's. <laughs> all right. All right. I think I think there's enough here to get the point. Big stamp. Trust money. me, this is a profound anecdote. Uh, anyway, he says, so I pretend not to hear her. And I go out and get in an envelope because I'm going to have a hell of a good time in the process of buying one envelope. I meet a lot of people and I see some great looking babies and a fire engine goes by and I give them the thumbs up and I'll ask a woman what kind of dog that is. And I don't know. The moral of the story is we're here on earth to fart around. And of course, the computers will do us out of that. And when the computers don't, what the computers don't realize or they don't care is we're dancing animals. You know, we love to move around, and it's like we're not supposed to dance at all anymore. Let's all get up and move around a bit right now, or at least dance. I find that to be, like, this beautiful idea of, like, because what made me think of this is you described the pizza shop with all the DoorDash drivers and the, yeah. the, 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 um, all the ways we can just stay home and have the stuff come to us. But, like, yeah, getting out in the community – seeing especially getting the reps in for your kids to be out in the world getting their needs met by 
getting it themselves is seems really important. Yeah, man. We uh, my daughter wanted a milkshake last night, and uh, we're we're dog sitting for the homie Jess Solomon. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And uh, we uh, we we had a dog walk left to do, so I ordered some milkshakes, but I said let's go pick them up. Yeah. And I made it a family thing. All four of us went out. We walked the dog, and then uh, we grabbed our milkshakes, and then we walked for like uh, almost two miles. Nice. So we got like a good, like healthy walk in for the day, so that we could like kind of earn the milkshake, if you will. Yeah, yeah. We spent family time. We had a lot of talks. Um, we're in a different part of Brooklyn that we live in, so we got to like discuss the architecture. Um, that is different from theirs versus where we're at. So we got to do some history talks. Oh, that's great. It was really like beautiful. So like, and uh, I made them get the order at the at the Hagen Dazs. Nice. You know what I mean? So like, they had a they we we did some skill building. Yeah. You know what I mean? Some family bonding, some exercising, and you got to treat. Yeah, you know I love I, mean? I love that you know how to treat life like constant research. Like you immerse yourself in it. Your your dog sitting for somebody else. You're living in that neighborhood. So it's a full full court press with the whole family of like, all right, let's like embed ourselves here and like yeah. make this our temporary home. That's yeah, great. Yeah, I think it's imp- it's the whole it's the human experience, man. Like, I-, I find it fascinating, like the way things are made and built and why people make choices. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, uh, just simple things of like, yo, these buildings are literally a hundred and twenty, hundred thirty years old. Like, yeah. what went in- into the decision to do that? Uh, why is this still here? Like, at what at what point did this become fashionable that right. people decided instead of rebuilding a McMansion here like they do in other places, let's keep this? Yeah, yeah. Um, what makes it unique? You know what I mean? You'll see, like, uh, a lot of the buildings out there got, like, uh, really interesting uh, stained glass yeah. that is unique to theirs. Uh, you'll see, like, cool artwork. Why do these streets have this name? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's just so much to, like, and this is true for every town. Yeah. Like every time we travel, like, yo, like we, yo, during the Fairfield trip. <laughs> yeah, we got to talk about do I know Dunkin' talk- Donuts, bro. <laughs> that bl- I can't stop thinking about this. We <laughs> we are on this trip to Fairfield. We st- right before pulling up, we're like a block or two away. Yeah. We go to a local Dunkin' Donuts. Patrick wanted some coffee. And I, no donut, still still going strong with still no going junk strong. food. No junk food. You know what I mean? But. As soon as we walk in, they had the donut display, and every donut at this Dunkin' Donut looked smaller yeah. than the standard Dunkin' Donut donut. But also taller. But also taller. They And I, and to, to their credit, Patrick pointed out, and I have to agree, they looked delicious. Yeah. They looked great. These were the best looking Dunkin' Donuts donuts I've ever seen. By far. But this they didn't look like Dunkin' Donut donuts. At all. None of it. It looked like some lady said, this is my dream. Yes. I'm making all these donuts. I'm putting it up. These donuts look like they had good posture. <laughs> How's that possible? Real talk. They look like the catalog pictures of donuts. <laughs> but we both clocked it. Yo, instantly. At, at minimum, 30% smaller yeah. than the typical yeah. donut at Dunkin' Donut. You know what I mean? But they looked very like artisanal, yes. really like well-made. Um, the menu I I am convinced is not the Dunkin' Donuts menu. Like the coffee, I'm sure was fine. Yeah, you got a food item. Yo, that... I got like a wrap where like uh, it had chimichurri sauce and I don't know what. <laughs> like, hey, there's no way that's on the Dunkin' Donuts menu. I did not think I was gonna go get uh Mexican infused <laughs> food Real in tough. Fairfield, Connecticut. <laughs> and, and I could I could not order it once I saw it. Yeah, like I went in, I was gonna get the like the bake the snack and bacon, which oh, I did yeah. get. I love that. Yeah, but like there was like yo like egg chimichurri wrap. Like what? Yeah, I'm gonna get that. And I saw some Spanish lady. I swear she made that on her own thing. Like <laughs> <laughs> she said, "Hold on, I gotta make it to the back in my own stove." You know, and she yeah. came out and I ate it. Delicious. I, I thought it was weird. She was listening to 311 while she did it, but. <laughs> But real talk, that that uh that was different. But like I I love that like I love that that's a local thing there. Like yeah. I'm, conf- I'm 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 curious if all the Connecticut Dunkin' Donuts had the wrong donuts. I'm curious if we got the wrong donuts. Yeah, you know, um maybe the donut maker didn't show up that morning, so they were like, we gotta go across the street and buy these from another <laughs> shop and yo, pass them off as our own. We need some, you know what I mean? We gonna sell out on donuts. Yeah. Um, I am I am like legitimately like blown away by that thing like it, yeah it, 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 i can't stop thinking about it i wonder if like that community is aware 
how good they have it. How good they have it. Like, well, yo, these donuts are delicious. They're they better did. for your calorie counts. Yeah, and they also did have the old man table. Very active old man table in the front window. Solid. These guys have been sitting there talking politics all morning and afternoon. It seemed like, really camped out. So maybe those guys know how good they have it. Real talk. Reading newspapers that I never saw for sale in that whole city. Oh, yeah. I don't yeah. even know where they got them from, but they were reading them. Yeah, that's going to die soon, right? Newspapers? Yeah, sadly, but yeah. Uh, yeah, it was a scene, and uh, the young man who rang us up was on his first day, and I, I just, we just left there so feeling so good about what, what the potential these fast food franchises have for themselves and what it looks like when a person is empowered enough to make it as beautiful as it can possibly be. Real talk, man. Make your own menu. Yeah. You know, not looking back on it, too, I am curious how, like, those businesses can't be cash anymore or like they have so little cash. Right. Because like that is a a restaurant where the staff combined is younger than both of us. Yeah. Like, yeah. The two of them together might be 30 years old. Yeah. Yeah. And that was the whole staff. Yeah. And they're, they're taking orders. They're dealing with money, but I'm assuming everyone pays in cards. You can't rob them. Like, yeah, you gonna hit them up for these mini donuts. I mean, that, that might be a worthwhile robbery to, coordinate because yeah. those donuts looked amazing real talk uh we showed discipline by not having any but like yeah. they look good yeah i'm proud of us amen uh and then we step out of the dunkin donuts to see this beautiful rainbow just arching over the top of the comedy club and it landed against another building that had this colorful rainbow mosaic graffiti i don't know what it was but it was it was just such a picturesque afternoon i didn't Expect for the gig to go so poorly. No, nah, I thought the gig was <laughs> no, no. I'm just kidding. No, the gig was great. I wasn't. I wasn't pumped about my own time. Uh, as you were just describing about trying to do multiple things successfully or equally in balance uh, does not work. <laughs> and uh, I'm trying to have a comedy career and a day job career and a happy home life and. Uh, I think I've got to sacrifice my home life and my day job to make comedy work out. <laughs> we'll see. I yo real talk. I like it sounds silly, but I believe that. Like I think, I think it's worthwhile telling your family, yo, for six months this is my agenda. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna give you all my attention these three months and rotate again. Yeah. To spend three months on comedy, three months your career, three months on your family. Or or I I should talk to Ross about this. Like pick two or three nights a week where it's like i'm literally clocking in yeah like you work. fully here like for this. I, i'm li i'm leaving at 6 p.m and i'm coming home at one in the morning yeah. because on these three nights i can realistically run around and try to try to make this all work real talk man you, but, you i'm telling you you can't do all of the things well you, you're gonna right. do the, you're gonna burn out or you're gonna do them all poorly yeah you gotta pick seasons be all like days of the week like knock it out like that yeah, I will say this conversation will definitely make me depressed rapidly. So I want to, I want to recap, I want to recap the gig a little bit because we had there were some fun things going on in Fairfield. Uh, uh, first of all, if if you haven't come to see us, co-headline, please do. It's a fun show. We we'll both talk. we both do a long set. It's regular stand up, and then we get on stage together at the end and we bullshit with the crowd and. This crowd was, a, it was a lively crowd. Yeah, yo, it was about it. We, we had a, a row full of women who were up to no good that night. Uh, Love it. Tell, Ladies night, baby. Tell, if you tried to crowd work them, they just told you lies in response. <laughs> How do you handle when an audience member just lies to you? I, I had a good time with them. I thought they were cool. I play, around, play along with well, it. Well, I mean, like, what's a good technical, like, you just, do you, do you acknowledge, oh, you're, you're fucking with me right now? or Yeah, uh, I think yeah. it depends on the type of lie, but, like, yeah, yeah. sometimes you could call it out. Um, but yeah, sometimes the lie is good. We I just, have fun with it. I just, as, as the editor of this project that we do together here, uh, I, 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 it's so hard for me to watch footage of myself. Like I cringe so much. I'm just like, what a fucking dork. Like, you don't, you, <laughs> what are you that, talking that about? person was clearly messing with you and you took it sincerely. Like everybody knows you're an idiot. Like, why can't you pick up on, like, I, so I, I have to admit there are so many times I don't get. I don't get it when somebody's joking with me sometimes. Okay. And I'm just like, man, I'm so stupid. Like why? Like I'm, I'm exaggerating here, but like, it's tough to rewatch the footage for me sometimes. Uh, yeah. You're being way but, too audience. I'm, a, right. I'm completely fine looking stupid all the time. Yeah. That's yeah. fine. Cause it's like, that's part of life. I, yeah. It would be 
I would feel crazier if I felt like I knew everything all the time. That yeah, seems yeah. All off to me. Yeah. Nope, I 100% understand every interaction I have. Yeah. Who the, who the hell are you? Yeah. The, the, the audacity, the hubris to yeah, think yeah. that you understand every human intention and interaction. Right. You know what I mean? Nah, man, I, 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 I joke, and then if somebody says, now nah, I was playing around, oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. And then I'll call it out on that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So we had them, and then behind them, it turns out we had there was a stand-up comedian in the crowd. Yeah. From the Czech Republic, from Prague. Prague, Was he yeah. from Prague? Yeah. I don't know if he's from Prague, but he's in Prague. Like, yeah. You know, that's where he lives at when he's not here. Yeah, so this guy sits through our whole 90-minute show, and at the end, it's revealed he's a comic. Yeah. And I'm still regretting not bringing him up. Yeah, yeah, I was with it, B. I felt like you wanted to wrap up the show, so I was like, all right, but... For I some reason, it just felt like one of those things where you never give an audience member control, but he, yeah, he was a comic. I should have, we should have... I felt like he was genuine, like he wasn't like... uh Someone that was going to get up there and do some stupid. Yeah, he's, he's a really nice guy. Yeah, he seemed yeah. like a nice dude. I would have yeah. brought him up. Um, also, we to your point, uh, I, I I agree with you if it's one person, one mic. But there's yeah. two of us. Yeah. And we have an extra mic. If yeah. they get out of pocket, just take the mic back while yeah. the other person talks. And if I gave him my mic, then I have two hands to strangle him yeah. with if needed. Gang, gang. Because everybody knows I'm a very violent person. Yeah, I know the streets. We bring them everywhere. Um, so we had that that was like a really cool thing yeah. and then just a really funny crowd they were like a yeah. funny crowd that homeboy with the with the beer cooler yeah he had a beer cooler i don't know if you so you didn't catch this that guy they weren't drinking they had seltzers in there i got to take one of their seltzers during my set nice it was my favorite seltzer black cherry seltzer we gotta i can't wait till we this show really takes off and we have a proper rider i'm gonna have black cherry seltzer oh. in every green room and some NA beers, which we did get to get in yeah. Hurleyville, which was great. Uh, what's on your rider when we hit? Arizona iced tea? Nice um, diet, you know what I mean? Trying trying to avoid the sugar. Yeah. Um, and uh, I want some, I want some Uts party mix. I, is, want, I is, want the whole the the clear bowl that comes from BJ. It's got like the orange sticks in there, and or the pretzel sticks and yeah, the you orange got pretzel shit, the crunchy cheese doodles. Yeah. It got like uh, the circle. Uh, knockoff tortilla Dorito. Now, will the Lay's people in your life be upset that you're talking Uts up in here? Um, yeah, a little bit, and I like Lay's overall. Yeah, like their 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 line is incredible, but specifically the party mix, I think they went over there. Okay, you know what I mean, Munchies is a good party mix too. I'm not against it. By the way, I am proud of us for having the most down to earth list of green room items ever. <laughs> <laughs> like, like a box, like the thing of Uts party mix. That's literally like a dollar seventy five <laughs> for like a huge bag of it. Because <laughs> it's, I think it's just made of like cardboard or something. Yeah, sort uh, of leftover chips. A whole, whole bunch of salt. Literally, somebody just at the end of the little conveyor line just goes like this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, let's uh, put it in a bag. That's right amazing. Uh, but yeah, real talk, if that, I ever got super, super famous, I'd want a new pair of Tims every show. Oh, yeah, yeah. That'd, that'd be, be like, that. Yeah. that's as like wild as I would get. New nope. Tims and a size 8 fitted of your city or state team. Yeah, yeah. Just that's, so I could yeah. rep your your area. Yeah, that's fun. Um, uh, So, yeah, the, the cooler couple, they the cooler couple had a good line after the show. The lady said to me, Everybody made every joke possible about our cooler, but nobody said anything about uh, organ donation or organ Ooh, organ delivery. Call. And I was like, that's so funny. That I mean, maybe it's been, I'm sure it's been done before because it's a BYOB show. If you live in Connecticut, go to the Fairfield Comedy Circle. You can bring whatever you want in a cooler. You'll be the most popular person at the show. Road talk. Uh, I love that Christine was drinking her bottle of wine in the front row, <laughs> <laughs> not even using a cup by the end of the show. Oh, yeah. Uh, we knew right away who like did the research and saw it was BYOB. They came ready. Totally. It was dope. Yeah. And then uh, we had good old, uh, our buddy in the front row. I don't know if we want to mention names at all. Uh, nah, he was cool, people. Yeah, just, we, had a, you know. we had a mega fan in the front row who was there to party. Amen. Which, God bless people who go to comedy shows by themselves to have a good time, because everybody deserves a good time. Yeah, uh, I was with it. He and, uh he got a little out of pocket with some of his responses, but overall he was uh, he was he was someone who had good intentions. Yes. I'm with that. And I relate to him very much. I uh I if I if my kids are out, if my kid and wife are out of town, I'm going to go do something for myself. And if I was still drinking, I would probably create lots and lots of scenes all over the city <laughs> in various environments. 
Uh, so he was he was a lot of fun. Nah, to he chat was cool, with. man. I honestly vibe with him a lot. Like I think he said something wrong. Yeah, and then it, it became a bigger thing because he's not a professional comedian. Yeah, he's not. You know, like riffing an answer like that isn't always going to land. You know what I mean? Right. We uh we get that out the way at the uh, open mics. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? You just see the more polished product. So he just had a moment like that, got out of pocket. But after the after the after the show, we piled it up. He was just an overly excited comedy fan that yeah. left New York and doesn't get to do that anymore. And I was I was really happy that he came out, had a good time. Yeah. Hope everybody else did too. Let's and I'm go. gonna use this as an opportunity to tease uh our YouTube content. Stay tuned on YouTube. I'll put together a little video from that crowd work section of our show and oh, yeah. uh, you'll hear how exactly this person got out of pocket i'll do everything i can to protect his identity uh but i think we both had some good responses to yeah to make it to make it okay when somebody says basically something uh bigoted uh how to make a crowd feel okay with it yeah. afterward um, I think we handled it well yeah you know i mean yeah so that was super fun um and yeah we had our our death defying drive home uh, and we all we all survived. Real talk. I didn't. This is the first time I didn't give a recap of the drive to my wife because I, I don't want her to be like, "Yeah, Yo, you can't ride with him no more." You know. Uh, well, thank God she's not one of our listeners. I assume. <laughs> no, nah, uh, my wife don't listen to none of my work. Okay? Yeah, she just makes sure that I get paid. Yeah, you know, yeah. You, it worked out. Cool. She's management. That's it. Um. All right. Well, maybe maybe that's a good wrapping up spot. Do you like have time it. to do another one today? Yeah, let's I, rock I, out. I, I didn't. Uh, I didn't check with you on that, but um, we could decide yeah. this off of the air. Yeah. But. Exactly. <laughs> all right. We're gonna go off the air right now. Come back next week. And, AKA uh, in one minute. Yeah. Hell yeah. Peace. Bye. -bye. <laughs>